Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of The Android Fact. Today's episode here, we're going to build out this navigation bar we see in the emulator. You see down here we have a couple different options. We can just go ahead and select. It's a pretty popular, uh, very common design pattern here. If we go ahead and click into you know, some further navigation, we'll see that this home tab is still selected. We'll still be able to bounce around to the other ones. And then as we go back, we end up uh, at this page we would expect to here. So. Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. And as we get started here, smash that like button, help me out, subscribe if you are brand new. And I've gone ahead and reverted everything back here. We're rerunning. We don't have that bottom nav in our emulator here. And if we take a look at our code here, we have, um, you know, a surface and then we have this nav host here that kind of controls all of the different navigation that we uh, offer at the moment here. Flipping over to this uh, document here, I'll go ahead and link this in the description if you need it. In order to in implement the bottom navigation, we're gonna have to change our code to look something like this. So we'll need a scaffold here, we'll tell it we need a bottom bar, we'll configure that bottom bar, and then internally here we have our nav host. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, copy most of this because why not? We'll go ahead and slap this inside of our theme. There's gonna be a whole bunch of things broken here. Some we just need to import though. Instead of bottom navigation, we are going to use the navigation bar because we have the material three import to this project here. I'm gonna go ahead and just import a couple of these things here. All right, folks, and after importing some things, we still have some errors, but most of this stuff does compile now, which is great. We obviously don't need this nav host in here, and instead we're just gonna replace it with our own right here. Uh, we can go ahead and just add the modifier here to have the padding of the inner padding that is passed in and that error should go away here. Perfect. We'll comment this out for now in case we need it, but uh, most likely we will not. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and look at this implementation. So we have our navigation bar here. There's a couple pieces of information that are happening. We'll go ahead and talk about that in a minute here. But one thing we do see is this call out on items here and items for each. It iterates through and we add in a navigation bar item to our navigation bar. Well, the concept here of items is that it should be a list of items that somehow represent the different top level screens that we want to uh, you know, display to the user that will kind of act as those tabs. So for simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and add a class up here. It's going to be a sealed class. We're going to call it the nav uh, destination. It's going to have a title. It's going to have a route here as well. And then it will also have an icon, which will be of type image vector because, uh, you know, that is the output of these like icons dot filled uh, assets that we get and whatnot. But basically our nav destination is going to be a a better way to encapsulate the different destinations that we care to navigate to inside of our uh, nav controller and specifically that's going to be implemented in our navigation bar here. So if you remember the video from the beginning of the episode here we had um, like a home destination right this would extend our nav destination we will have a title of let's say home we will have a route of, I believe it is already implemented as home screen. And then our icon here will be icons.filled.home. Uh, I'm just gonna duplicate this and add them in for the other ones. So we had the episodes as well, and we had search. All right, and then just clean this up here. We just added in the episodes as the title, search as the title, changed around the icons, all that kind of stuff. So now we have a nice way to represent these different nav destinations. Now here we're going to create our items, which is going to be a list of these nav destinations. So we'll create nav destination dot home, uh, nav destination dot episodes, and nav destination dot search. And this should correlate to basically those three tabs that we want at the bottom. Now our items obviously resolves here. We can go ahead and change some things around because instead of hard coding the favorite icon, we can go ahead and say screen dot icon this screen variable is coming from what we are iterating over and then icon is obviously referencing this value here which we're setting in all of these different um, objects there we're going to pull this onto one line because why not we're also going to do the right thing here and go ahead and just uh you know namespace all of our different variables here our label again we can access this via the screen dot title 
perfect. The selected is a very interesting um, little bit of logic that they have here in the documentation that from my testing does not work. So <laughs> I'll get to explaining why this doesn't work and then how we're going to fix it. And then otherwise here, their object uh, or their, their code of screen.route, right? Basically clicking on any of those tabs, we navigate to screen.route, that should uh, work basically the same because we've gone ahead and declared, where is it, where is it, where is it? The route right here. Now, uh, the episodes and the search destinations do not exist in our nav graph at the moment. The only one that does is our home screen right here, this composable right here. Uh, so we're obviously going to have to add the other ones in. So we're going to have the route here be, um, let's go ahead with our nav destination dot episodes dot route perfect and then in here we obviously have our composables we don't really have a screen yet that we're going to build out so we're just going to go ahead and put a text element here that just simply says episodes and if we take a look at this composable here it's very simple we have a column that's going to take up the entire size we're just going to center all of our content vertically and horizontally and we have a simple text element here that just says episodes we're going to go ahead and duplicate this entirely instead of the nav destination being episodes, uh, where we got, we're going to have search here route, and then we're just going to change around the text right here. These are obviously just placeholders. We're going to, in future episodes, build out the episode screen, the search screen, hit all the APIs, do some caching, everything that we've been doing in this uh, series so far. So we'll come back to the implementation there. Uh, but the good news is I actually think we're kind of ready to run it here. So let's go ahead and see. Coming back to life here, we see the app booting up and we do see a couple issues here. All right, very, very easy to switch out, but um, yeah, so obviously we don't have the, the, the background being what we need it to be, but this does appear to be working. Let's go ahead and clean some of this stuff up here. So I believe we had a surface before that had this uh, background color. Yes, it does. We're just gonna apply that background color on the entire nav host now. So now we do get that. If we flip around here, we do see our composables swapping in and out, which is super nice. We go ahead and hit the back button here as well or, or gesture backwards we land on that home page and then um yeah navigation seems to continue working which is great uh yep absolutely this is just a weird character that's only in one episode um but it is functional it is working however we notice down here that it does look a little bit different it's actually not really following our theme and stuff and we're not abiding by like a perfect theme and whatnot but um we can go ahead and change this around anyway. So first things first, on our navigation bar here, we can go ahead and take a look at what we have. If we go ahead and drill into this actually, we can see the different um, pieces of information here. Our documentation looks like we have something here called container color, the color used for the background of this navigation bar. Perfect, so that's exactly what we're looking for here, our container color. We're going to have that Rick primary, which is that dark, blue background so things kind of blend in and then well let's go ahead and run that but then we can go ahead and modify our navigation bar item itself because the uh, you know theming now at this point looks a little broken right it doesn't really uh, fit it has just this default gray and black and all that kind of stuff but we can go ahead and change that really quickly on each individual navigation bar item now we can go ahead and set our colors we're going to use the navigation bar item default uh, dot colors here oops and then we have a bunch of colors in here that we can override so let's just go ahead and look at it real quick here we can see we have a selected icon color a selected text color the indicator color uh, unselected icon unselected text disabled icon and text etc there's a lot of functionality here that you can um, you know tweak to your own theming needs and whatnot which is really just I mean, to me, that's just absolutely powerful. I, I love that so much. Compose is significantly better than XML. So moving on here, we're going to have our selected icon color. I think I'm actually going to uh, selected icon color. We're just going to leave that as color dot transparent. And instead, we're going to turn. Oh, no, sorry. The selected icon is what we need one of the things to be. So we're going to change that to be the Rick action, which is like a uh, that that brighter blue that we see. We have the selected text color which is also going to follow that same one and then indicator color 
is going to change out. That will just be the color dot transparent. That's the actual little circle thing that we see down there. So we're gonna set that to transparent and it's just going to appear like this item is highlighted instead. You can see the little ripple as you click through and click around, but I don't think that's the end of the world. Again, this is just my own decisions and whatnot. If you really wanted to, you could change out these unselected colors and icons and stuff, and it's really just a matter of overriding whatever color you want here. I'm gonna leave it as is because uh, you know, why not? I did want to touch on one other thing here. We notice we're on the home screen right now, uh, but if we select someone like Beth Smith, we're still like within that navigational, you know, direction, so to speak, or hierarchy, so to speak. Uh, but we see this home tab is no longer selected, right? And it's not until we go back to the home tab uh, the actual like root destination that this tab starts to highlight again. And obviously we want to switch that out. We want to have that function properly. Uh, and of course, if you go deeper in the navigational graph here, um, you don't end up seeing any of the, you know, the, the correctly highlighted element. Um, we can go ahead and quickly clean that up. That is what they tried to do here. If anyone does know how this is supposed to function, I'd love to hear it in the comments, but I did step through some breakpoints and whatnot, and it really just doesn't seem to be working as well. The concept of hierarchy here is that it's supposed to just traverse the tree upwards and try to find you know, the fact that this page that we see right now is actually the parent of this page, and so therefore this home tab should be selected. Um, it actually wasn't functioning properly when I was looking at it in the debugger and stuff, so let me know if I'm missing something, but um, we can go ahead and just quickly change this around by maintaining this information ourselves, right? So if we just have the selected index is going to be a remember block here, and we'll have the mutable uh, int state of, we'll leave it at zero, of course, import the proper things. And we can get that all in one line because why not we can just go ahead and manage that here um, the one thing we'll have to change around is instead of for each we're going to have to use the for each index option uh, we'll leave this as screen and then in the selected block here we're just going to say if our index equals the selected index and on click we're going to update our selected index to be the index right and so now we're just going to be maintaining this information ourselves this does allow us to actually cut out this line of code, which then allows us to cut out this line of code. So we do clean up things a tiny bit, but now we'll see everything functions as expected when we're navigating around the top level. And when we go in a little bit deeper to Morty Smith or anywhere further, we see that we still have that home selected. We can even navigate to the search or the episodes and go back to the home. And we remember that we're on that page instead of this page here. So pretty quick tutorial here. Hopefully you learned something. You can really take this concept of the sealed class a little bit further if you want to really round out all of your destinations to, to abide by this and make it a little bit cleaner and less you know hard-coded to regular strings and stuff like that. I'll leave that up to you if you want to do it. Obviously all the code is available on GitHub, but um, the focus of this video is really getting that bottom bar uh, figured out. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for following along. We are going to build out these next two pages uh, in, in the following episodes. So stick around if you like that. Subscribe if you are brand new and you don't want to miss out. And I'll catch you there. Thanks.